pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have a roll call. Earl Wilson? Here. Mark Buckeye? Robbie Pratt? Here. Gina Bryant? Here. Barb Bobbishon? Here. All right, we've got a quorum. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next we have approval of the minutes. Questions on this? Entertain a motion to approve. I so move. Second. Robbie. Motion. Earl second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next we have public comment. Any public comment? Uh, I saw there was a change to the abandoned mobile homes. Uh, yes. Number five. I'm glad you put that in there. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. considered vacant, not abandoned. Okay. Yeah. Do you and want to say anything as else? As far Jeff? as I got <laughs> on the new <laughs> thing. The and new I'll go over some of that here in a moment. Okay. If you have another question, that's fine. Um, okay. Anything else right now? No. Not right now. Uh, we'll move on to old business. So I sent to you all the uh, documents we've been discussing. Uh, which is the IRC, which is the uh, International Residential Code, Manufactured Housing Code. Uh, in other words, adopting that into our uh, ordinance. The Pre-HUD Mobile Home Proposed Ordinance, which is the document that would basically um, go into nuisance ordinance about Pre-HUD Mobile Homes. And then the Mobile Home Occupancy Inspection doesn't really need to be adopted into ordinance. That's just a form. I was. We just kind of have been going over it with the owners and the occupants to get it right and uh, getting your feedback also. The, uh, the things that, uh, if you'll remember, we had our meeting about six weeks ago with um, about five owner landlords present that night. Got feedback from them, made several changes uh, on the... Uh, First document, if you have them in the order, I handed them to you with the manufactured housing code adoption. We added that down at the bottom, soil classification is will be repealed. So it was never something that was going to come into play, most likely anyway, but it was brought to the attention of the board and myself that uh, or the commission that it could come into play. Uh, so in this, it's repealed. So of that approximately 18 pages, that section wouldn't be in effect if this were to be adopted. Okay. On the next document, which is uh, pre-HUD mobile homes, I'll go 
back and get my changes. Hold on here just a sec. There were some changes also. We kind of cleaned up some language in the paragraph that begins any abandoned mobile home. Um, I think uh, one of the landlords brought up when is it actually abandoned. So uh, what I put in here is any abandoned mobile home must be removed from the city of St. Genevieve or otherwise disposed of in a legal manner within 100 days of being deemed abandoned. Um, notice shall be made and processed in the same manner as provided for dangerous buildings in section 215, 220. So there's already a process in place for that notification to be delivered. We'll use the same process. When that day happens, it would be 180 days from that day. Uh, on down the uh, document there, the mobile home definition came up. I think someone asked about whether it would be still a mobile home if it was uh, if the uh, uh, gooseneck were removed and it was sitting on blocks. Uh, in ordinance already, there is a definition for mobile home. So I basically transferred that. This is the existing definition in another section of ordinance. A transportable dwelling unit suitable for year-round occupancy by original design, containing the same water supply, waste disposal, and electrical convenience as immobile housing and having no foundation other than wheels, jacks, skirting, or other temporary supports. So if you were to take a mobile home and take the gooseneck off and sit it on blocks, which there are some of those in the city, that would not be a mobile home anymore. It'd be real estate. So I think that solved that. And then under the definition of abandoned mobile home, um, Jenny brought it up, but we added number five. So an abandoned mobile home, I'm going to start from the beginning, would be one not occupied for 180 days, um, one for which applicable taxes haven't been paid for a year, one that is in a condition which presents a substantial danger or hazard. I'm not going through those in detail because they're the same as they have been. One which has remained on the same property supported by its wheels and tongue with minimal effort. So someone brought it to a piece of property and dropped it and left it. That's what that is. And then we added five. It says an unoccupied mobile home that is in good repair on the exterior that sits upon a property that is not creating a public nuisance, that is current on applicable taxes, that is not presenting a substantial danger or hazard to public health, safety, or welfare, and that is properly secured and protected from unauthorized entry will be considered vacant and not abandoned. Yes, sir. We go back to the definition of a mobile home. A transportable dwelling unit suitable for year-round occupancy by original design, containing the same water supply, waste disposal, and electrical conveniences as immobile housing and, and having no foundation other than wheels, jacks, skirting, or other temporary supports. So in order for it to be real estate, you'd have to remove the axle? Which is that it would have to, reasonable? yeah. Okay. So the tongue of the axle would have to come off. Yeah. What did I say? The uh, gooseneck. I said the gooseneck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that is the changes to the document pre-HUD mobile homes. In other words, it gives those folks a chance that are working on something to continue to work on it. As long as it stays in good shape, it's not accessible to <clears throat> bad element, you can't get inside it, uh, the property around it stays in good shape, and um, it's not creating a nuisance and the taxes are paid on it. And you guys interrupt me as needed. Jenny, any questions on that? No, that Sue and I were both concerned because as of right now, I have a mobile home that has been vacant for over a year. I'm finally getting people to work on it. <laughs> right. And I don't know when I'll get a renter in because it takes forever to find a good renter. So yeah, so that kind of clears. But yeah, it's being worked on. It's everything around it is good. So yeah, that kind of cleared that up. Okay. 
the next document was labeled Exhibit A. I just changed it to Attachment A. Um, uh, let's see, at the top where it says City Building Inspector to verify. It used to say Mobile Home meets Mobile Home Occupancy Inspection Standards Exhibit B to comply with St. Genevieve Municipal Code Section 500-220. I just simplified that to Mobile Home receives a certificate, a certificate of occupancy to comply with St. Genevieve Municipal Code 500-220. Um, we already require an occupancy inspection, so I didn't feel it necessary to kind of reiterate that. In other words, you know, in order to allow a trailer to stay or a new one to come in, it has to meet these things, if you remember. A mobile home receives a certificate of occupancy, and then the walls, ceilings, and doors of each compartment containing the furnace or water heater are aligned with half-inch crater gypsum board, um, unless the door opens to the exterior, in which case it can be a metal door, and each room designated expressly for sleeping purposes should have an exterior exit door or at least one outside egress window, um, and it goes into some dimensions there. I did share, it was either with Jenny or Sue Gag that um, if there were a mobile home that meets <coughs> everything on here except for that window stipulation, we would allow a step or stair to be put there. Because what this is, is some older trailers <coughs> have windows that are higher than mm. you can get out, basically, and you have to have that. So we would allow that, Mike and I, the inspe building inspector and I. Um, the next paragraph there, it used to say within 30 days of initial city occupancy and within 30 days of any change of ownership, owner to provide signed verification of the following from a qualified electrician. Um, there was some question about does it have to be done every time an occupant changes and we agreed that it was every time the ownership would change after it's initially done once. So it says within 30 days of the first city occupancy inspection following adoption of this ordinance work to be adopted and within 30 days of any change of ownership owner to provide signed verification of the following from a qualified electrician and I somebody also in the audience that day brought up well what if um, citizens already inspected so we put verification from the utility company of these things would also be accepted so if if when the citizens comes out they can verify these things and sign and date that that could be submitted. If not, the owner would have to get a qualified electrician to perform this inspection and submit that to the city. And then the same change was made in the next paragraph with the uh, gas inspection. So instead of any change of occupancy, it's with the initial change after the adoption date and then any change of ownership. And again, it could be from a qualified HVAC technician or from a utility company. Any questions on any of that? Everything else on that stayed the same. The last document there is the actual inspection. It would be for mobile homes versus non-mobile home. Um, one of the questions that came up at our last meeting was about the bottom board. So if you'll see number four here, it says bottom board should be rodent proof throughout. Bottom board should have vapor barrier or complete intact skirting shall be present. Material use for repairs of bottom board shall be at least equivalent to the original no visible pest infestation. So uh, again, one of the landlords asked about the vapor barrier. What we put on there was that you could also have the skirting but you have to have a solid, intact bottom board. In other words, some of the trailers, mobile homes, we've talked about where I can put my foot through, that's no good. Not intact bottom board. But if the bottom board's intact, skirting's in place, or there's a vapor barrier underneath, you'd be okay. When you say put your foot through, you mean on the inside of the mobile home? Yeah. The floors have to be solid. <laughs> Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, on to the second page. There used to be four things under electrical. One of them um, concerning aluminum connectors. That's actually part of the electrical inspection, so we removed it. It was basically stated twice. 
So there's only three there now. That was that on that page. All the changes on that page. On the back page of that inspection, uh, on number six, we added or operable window. So range hoods and bathroom exhaust fans shall be in good working condition or a bathroom can have an operable window. Key word being operable, you got to be able to open it. If the mobile home originally didn't have a range hood, are we going to have to put one in? Well, there should be ventilation there. Right. Sometimes they're in the wall or they're... Mm -hmm. um, well, agreed. Yes. If there's a source of ventilation, yes. Okay. There used to be little fans, didn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was just in the wall instead of oh, above. Yeah. Yeah. And on the last one, um, this might have been Jenny also that brought this up. It, it didn't always say if gas appliances are present. So now it says approved listed carbon monoxide detector shall be properly located, installed, and operable if gas appliances are present, which was kind of a given, but we put it in there. Those are the changes from the previous meeting we had with uh, mobile home park landlords. And I think there was actually a uh, tenant oh, there that night also. I will tell you, um, we had a mobile home that uh, we used this. We, we talked with the owner. It's not anyone that was at that, or that is here tonight. And it's not in a mobile home park. Um, he, he said that it was fine. We used it. Um, we found some deficiencies. He made the corrections. It's a pre-HUD mobile home. It's not sparkling and beautiful on the outside by any means. But he made all the corrections and it passed. And the person you know who lives inside it is now safer, more secure, more healthy structure. Um, on that note, I know I've been down this road before, but these ordinances aren't out there to play get you with anyone. I think we've been pretty outward and vocal about what we're doing and shared it with lots of people. Um, these would go in place to maintain a healthier, safer, more secure environment for citizens. Uh, it would provide a more specific standard for these structures, including their foundation, anchoring, and accessory structures. Uh, it, would, it would put improved and consistent standards in place for mobile home inspections versus just a standard inspection. It would limit any further pre-HUD mobile homes from entering the city unless they meet these standards, or if you remember, we put a stipulation in there that says the Board of Aldermen can approve if for some reason they find it necessary. And then it puts a process in place for addressing abandoned and significant, significantly damaged mobile homes while also allowing those working on mobile homes to continue doing so as long as the property is properly maintained. Uh, it also allows those who currently own or occupy mobile homes to remain under the shame, ownership, shame, under the same ownership and occupancy. So if you live in one right now, or you own one right now that has an occupant in it, it it's fine. We're not going to come out and hand you a piece of paper that says you have to leave or get your mobile home out of the city. If it changes occupants, you're going to have to do some work to bring it up to this standard or do something else with it. Okay. I just want to be clear. What is the current inspection? It was after a tenant change, if it's been more than one year. That stays in place. So that's that's the way it is. So if I have a tenant there for added, two years and he leaves and I get an inspection. Correct. Okay. But the first time, if it's pre-HUD, yes. you'll go through this process where we do that plus those other things. Now I have tenants in one that's pre-HUD, just barely. <laughs> so do I have to, they're already in there. I had a city inspection on it. Then okay. you're good. Okay. The next time it changes, mm -hmm. if it's been a year, We'll do the occupancy inspection like we've always had, only there's a, slight, a few different things on this new occupancy inspection. But then you'll do those other things where you'll get a qualified electrician, qualified HVAC, and we'll make sure that the heater closet is up to code and so on. Once that's done, going forward, as long as you were to own it, you would just do an occupancy inspection anytime there's an occupant change, as long as it 
has been more than a year. Now, if we sell them, it'd be the same thing, the same type of inspection. The new owner would have to go through the extended one, mm -hmm. and then anytime the occupant changed, it would just go back to the way it is. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so the new owner would be responsible. Hopefully, we'd have them all up to code. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Number seven, I think it's the second page. Anchors properly installed and free of damage. Most of those have skirting on them. You can't see the anchors. Well, it says in there you're going to have to, um, if not, we talked about it at the last meeting, you're going to have to make the underside uh, viewable in at least two locations. And you did say remove all the skirting. We talked about that was a little much. Right. So you're going to have to have at least two spots where we can look under the trailer. Okay. Other questions or concerns? Gentlemen? Save it for the Alderman meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, anything else? I don't think so. I mean, I'm hoping everything will, I'm hoping it won't take a whole lot of more money, but it sounds like the changes you've made. It's going to take a little bit more. I think yeah. we were pretty upfront about that, but I think we've tried to limit it while trying to get it as much I hate to say it, bang for the buck, safety, security, healthy. I guess my biggest concern is I have no idea. We bought these. We were, I don't know how many owners had these before we bought them. I have no idea where the anchors would be. We do have one that's got straps over the top yet. But so what part of the underskirting would I take off? We can come out and look at that. I don't think okay. Mike or I, either one would mind. Because okay. they can be anchored in multiple ways. Okay, yeah, because I would have no idea. And I think also it would have to be worked out, but and I don't think you're here. Two or three meetings ago, we talked with the Public Service Commission gentleman. We had him on the speakerphone, and I, he might be able to come to town and point out some of that stuff too. Uh, there's a, a guy. There's a guy. There's a, a person for each region, and he was pretty willing to help out with that. That's that's part of what they do with new mobile homes. They make sure the skirting is to or the skirting. The anchoring is to code. Uh, they don't do it on used mobile homes, but we can always call and see. Mike and I can come out first. Okay. Because we used to do it on mobile homes that were installed, that were you know moved in, but the ones out there, we well, we never got to inspect anyway, except a couple. Yeah. I have a question about the abandoned mobile homes. Uh -huh. They they have 180 days. Uh, if if they don't remove them then if they did walk away and who's that's what responsible? we face right now with who's with responsible properties. for for, uh, for removing it uh, we would probably go down the process we go with a nuisance property right now which is means deeming it a public nuisance and then it would be up to the board of aldermen to to, to deem it a public nuisance and then the city would remove it and issue the owner a bill. I did talk with Linda Wagner today, uh, who's the county assessor. Um, the mobile homes that aren't considered real estate that are still personal property, she has that list. So that doesn't mean that I'll be able to do anything with it, but she could tell me who owned that mobile home. Okay. And then we would send them a bill which is what we do now, but sometimes that bill is, doesn't get paid. Is her standard the same as, as your proposal? It is not. It is not. But I wanted to make it known that that list is available. And if it's real estate, it's certainly available. I can look that up. Like there are some mobile homes. Uh, Mr. Dalton was here at our last meeting, if you remember. He owns some down here at the corner of Seraphin and South Main. That's his mobile homes on his property so i'm pretty sure they consider that real estate whereas some of jenny's are personal property uh, that are owned by other people but sit on her land mm -hmm. but we could get the names of those folks doesn't mean that they would do anything yeah, yeah i understand shoot well he brought up a good point you know if we're doing a, a home and somebody's still there, we've got a, some expectation of getting our money back. If it's a mobile home and you move it, you ain't going to get any money back. Right? Pretty well. 
I mean, it's the same process we follow now. We, we, we're, we've we done a few abatements and we've had to issue bills and they didn't get paid. And that's strictly on real estate. But it's still a bill, I guess. My yeah. So, I would beat this horse to death, but let's say there's a mobile home that is not affixed to a permanent foundation. It's been abandoned, and the city, the property owner, isn't going to do anything. The city agrees to mitigate the public nuisance. Do we have any interest in the underlying real estate? I think if it's a if it's a like a vegetation or junk nuisance, we certainly do. But the house, you know, it's. That's what it's a land and structure. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we would have any fallback, if that's what you're saying, to go to the owner and say, we need you to pay this bill. Probably. Is that something we need to bring up at our next work session that we're going to be talking about anyway? We're talking about. So, I don't know if there's a solution to it. I mean, I think we, we, we have the same... invoice someone for failure to perform under our ordinance we have the same legal remedy whether it was a permanent structure on the lot or personal property i think we probably put a lien on the property and then sit on our hands and until something happens it's 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 not a pretty outcome from the financial aspect i'm not denying that but it serves the purpose of meeting other goals, nuisance properties, enjoyment of the city for other folks. Oh, yeah, that man. Yeah. Got to do something. So, as I mentioned in my email, unless you have other changes you'd like to see, uh, and certainly ask questions if you have them, this is the point where you can decide you don't want to move forward, or we make a motion to approve recommendation or I'm sorry to recommend approval to the Board of Aldermen. So this will come to us as a, an ordinance if they approve it. What would probably happen if they recommend approval tonight is I would ask if you want to have a work session <laughs> about it beforehand but I would tell you that these folks have worked on it. No, that's, no I'm just saying you'll bring it to us as an ordinance. Yes sir. That's fine. Um, I've been trying to figure out, you've already had rules and regulations. I've been doing city inspections since we've owned our property. Mm -hmm. Can you pinpoint exactly what you've added to what we've already had? I mean, most of what's in here is stuff we've already been doing anyway. I would say you have, not all have, is one thing. But there's a, some new stuff. I'm trying to figure out what the new stuff is. If you're I guess, talking about I guess the anchoring, the anchors maybe, and the the addition of the code gives us something to fall back on if someone were to challenge it. I, I like that. The code we've used has been property maintenance, and so this adds mobile home codes for anchoring, like you mentioned, to our ordinances. And then the pre-HUD piece of it. That is new, and I think that it addresses some of the problem structures that are out there right now, are almost all pre-HUD. It gives us a process to go through with those owners. Okay. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference, Jenny, from when I was doing them. Uh, no, there, I mean, I read through this pretty thoroughly and Except the everything that we've been doing, so. The inspection itself, no. I think it's maybe worded a little more specifically right. than the one we yeah. use, and it maybe gives you a better idea what we're looking at, and it adds some minute things like we've talked about egress and things like that. But beyond that, it's just a, a more specific inspection, or a more specifically worded inspection. In other words, it gives you, like you said, it gives you the pre-HUD wasn't in there before, so if somebody's letting their pre-HUD home go into disarray or it's, it's not meeting inspections, you've got something to fall back on and say it's in here now. Yep, and okay. I mean, if 
you're probably aware because some of them back to your property there are some out there right now that were this to pass would probably fit this abandonment description that we need to pursue because they're just sitting there with animals in them and so on I do have a question, and I guess part of the ignorance for not following this from the beginning. Uh, so what was the reasoning behind all of this being brought up as far as the pre hut homes? Were they not being held to the same standards as as newer mobile homes, or what, what was the reasoning behind this? There's a couple of answers there. One, yes, pre hut standards. I guess we were holding them to the same property maintenance standards. But pre-HUD mobile homes, there's no code there. When HUD came, they put a codes in place for constructing it. Before HUD, or mobile homes were held to the standard as same as a camper or recreational vehicle. And they really weren't constructed to last 40 or 50 years. So that played into it. There was no standard or there was no code there that they were built to. And two, um, when we uh, got permission, the board, to work with citizens, and we got into the, some of these, I, my foot did go through the floor of some. We made deemed one uninhabitable about a year ago, December or January last year, where there was a young lady and her child living in it. I put my foot through it. The water heater not, was about the purpose. No. <laughs> The, my, the water heater was about to fall through the floor. Um, it was bad. It was bad. And so we were able to get into those now. And the only other thing I would tell you is I've since been to another one where I can put my foot through the floor, where the water heater is about to fall in, where um, the, 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 the ceiling is falling. Um, you know, those, they're not super strong materials to begin with. But, so that I brought to this commission and we discussed, maybe we should put some standards in place. And then we talked about the pre hud mobile homes and how they should be held to a standard and how there are municipalities out there that say you cannot bring these structures into the city anymore and this group agreed we should go forward with something of that nature. Does that answer your question? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, thank you. You're welcome. So basically because you weren't getting notified about occupancy changes, a lot of mobile homes were not being inspected for years and years and landlords did not keep them up, so that's what started this whole thing. I'd say that's a solid yes. Yes. And then also rental homes too. This is there's homes that same thing was happening in the houses too. Rental yeah. houses. So. so with the houses, you had water chains, water bills. Yes, not always. Not, not always. always. Not, not, always. always. Not, like not always. No. Not no. always. No. But the homes, you know, let's be fair, are constructed of materials that are meant to last longer. And so the same process, no water change, sits and sits and sits. It's going to wear more on the mobile home than it is on the apartment complex, for lack of a better term. So what was preventing you from getting into these mobile homes compared to a uh, rental house, or just because of the lack of notification, or? Well, there was no, uh, particularly on the mobile home parks, most of those, the water bill is one bill, and we weren't getting any notification like we are now from the electric company. So they were going years without any inspection. So no one had gotten into them. I don't know if Jimmy had gotten into some, probably maybe a few were, that had landlords that called him. No. No. The only way I found out, like if somebody was moving to a house and I'd say, where did you, you move from? And they'd say, <laughs> out there, and I'd say, oh, okay, and I'd go out there and I'd knock on the door. You needed inspected. But other than that, that was it. The lady right there always had hers inspected. Agreed, and still does. That was an extra insurance policy. If I had that city inspection, Right and something happens a few months down the road, I know it wasn't like that when right, right. we got mm -hmm. inspected. And prior to this commission and this subject matter, Jenny still would call me for inspections. 
she may question something, but rightfully so. Um, not everyone is of, the, of that nature. Exactly. I think the importance of this process is, is that we engaged the people who have an interest in the issue. And we had public meetings and, and we solicited input and it's been a very open participative process. And I think that, that that's how we're making it should be. Do you agree with that, Jenny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would have uh, really been aggravated if this would have all been passed and nobody told me anything about right. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we had a lot of questions and I had a but lot you of felt I, had, you, right. I had some fears. You were taken care of, so there was nothing yeah. slipped under the rug in, in your Yeah, my mind. first thing was, oh my gosh, where am I going to get the money to do all right. these new things they're going to make me do? And, and mm -hmm. you know. You know, we're we're not rich landlords. We're so we're understand. barely keeping the business above water right now. Right. So yeah. And, and as a do city, can. yeah. And as a city, I think the the mayor and the board have to watch out for the citizens too. That are, you know, yeah. the, that we have to watch out for for public safety. You know, people are living in these homes, and and like I say, it is our responsibility. And and I've heard, I know for a fact. You've been old people been out there into some of these places where nobody should be living, right. you know. But that's all they could afford, and I get that too. But it's but we still you got to protect these people need to be protected. I had a landlord once tell me that poor people need that need to have a place to live too. Yeah, said, yeah but but we they need to be safe them. also. Yes, yeah. 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 It, it has to be safe. Well, it should be a, a, a safe place for them to live. You know, and that's yeah. I was just in Denver, and they were. Housing projects up there, you know, HUD projects that there's no heat, no water, and, and these poor people are, are living in these conditions, and nobody's doing anything about it, you know. So finally, they're getting enough. They're getting enough mm -hmm. notification. So how long has this been going on? Your committee's been over a year now, right? Changing. Actually, I think before we established the commission, we just had a meeting of people who were interested, right. and that's been a year ago. Yeah. And I think, I hope it's evident, but we've tried this commission, the landlord's input, we've tried to drive straight and narrow with a balance of the landlord's interest, the city's interest, the tenant's interest, and try to come up with a document that is fair to everyone. Just my opinion, I'm sorry. Maybe I wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to offer that. I'm good with this. I make a motion. Second. What, would you? There's a motion on there. Is that what you're saying on the agenda I handed out? So you're going to make a motion to recommend approval? Yes. Of the, I don't want to put it in words. All of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Read it. <laughs> Can you tell that's what I'm implying? Yes. I make a motion to re recommend approval of the IRC Manufactured Housing Code Ordinance and Pre-HUD Mobile Home Ordinance with Amendment A as presented. Uh, oh. <laughs> Attachment A as presented to the Board of Aldermen. Thank you. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that an aye? Any opposed? Motion carries. Any new business that anyone would like to bring up? So what are your plans going forward for the committee? That's my next topic of conversation. It's not on the agenda, but it would be new business, I guess. Uh, that's kind of also why I asked anything else you'd like to discuss. If not, we'd probably go back to a quarterly Type meeting, unless you have anything specifically you'd like to address, and we'll probably shoot for our next meeting in the January February time frame. Anything? Then probably I'll put a reminder in my calendar uh, around January 1st to shoot an email out to you and ask for our meeting date, and uh, we'll meet again then. And then it would be quarterly after that, unless we come to a topic like this that needs more frequent meeting. Excellent. If not, if anything, and, and unless there's anything else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.
Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your work. Thank you, guys. Thank you.